there YouTube, this is Vargas XX78 uh, with a collection pick-up video, comic book edition. Uh, went to pick up some comic books I had waiting for me at my comic book store. And like always, I, I wanted to share the haul with you guys, so uh, let's get started. First off, I picked up Action Comics issue 9, uh, featuring the Superman of Earth 23. Uh, I actually found this issue, like I said it before, I, I, I'm still not sold on Grant Morrison's action comics. Uh, but I wanted to pick up this one because uh, it has a, like a, you know, an alternate world story and I kind of really, really like those. Uh, and this one is actually very interesting because uh, there's the Superman who's uh, the President of the United States. And, you know, uh, he encounters uh, Clark, uh, Clark Kent and Lewis Lane from another universe. But what I thought was interesting is that uh, that Clark and Lewis had this whole slider thing going on. I, I don't know if anyone watched that old TV show uh, that they passed on Fox a, a long time ago. But uh, they, they create this machine that allows them to travel through time and they're like skipping through all the different uh, universes. And that's when they finally reach the uh, the Earth-23 where uh, this, this Superman is there. I thought that was actually very interesting. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, that Grant Morrison did that, so um, I really like this issue. Uh, picked up Amazing Spider-Man issue 685, continuing the story of the ends of the Earth. Um, yeah, not the, the Doctor Octopus puts an ultimatum that he wants the whole world to go after Spider-Man, so he, uh, Silver Sable, and the uh, Black Widow are trying to escape that. Uh, but I don't know, I, I, as much as I like this, I, I still kind of like Spider Island a little bit more. Even though the stakes, again, are, are really, really big in this this uh, this series, I, I still kind of like Spider Island a bit more, so. Picked up Venom, issue 17. Uh, still loving the Venom series. Uh, it's written wonderfully, and now uh, Flash Thompson is part of the Secret Avengers, but uh, the Crime Master ha has formed his own team to take down uh, Venom. And it has Jack O' Lantern. It has the Human Fly, but it also has uh, Eddie Brock. Uh, they actually fuse Eddie Brock with the Toxin Symbiont, so uh, that that's going to be interesting. The the Savage Six is going to be really really interesting. Uh, can't wait to for the next issue. Picked up Astonishing X Men issue forty nine, uh, featuring the return of the Marauders, and. Uh, uh, I was thinking of dropping Astonishing X-Men, but I'm really liking uh, what they're doing now. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely pick up, the, uh, keep picking up Astonishing X-Men. Picked up issue 3 of Avengers vs. X-Men. Uh, everything's building up, but I think Captain America did the stupidest thing he could have possibly done. Uh, because after the big fight in Topia... Uh, Wolverine is kind of trying to help out Cap and giving him all these strategies and everything. And Captain America, out of the blue, comes out and says that, uh, I can't trust you, Wolverine. Uh, you know, you, you have deeper ties with the X-Men and stuff like that. Uh, I can't trust you, so uh, I'm going to bench you. And Wolverine's like, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I went to bat for you and you're going to do this. And then Captain America just kicks Wolverine out of the Quinjet and drops him off in, in the Antarctic. And I thought that was the stupidest thing Captain America could have possibly done. Uh, and I knew, uh, as much as I love the character, he has done some pretty stupid decisions. And I think uh, kicking Wolverine out was the biggest one of them. But uh, really, really digging the Avengers vs. X-Men thing. Uh, which they also released this Avengers vs. X-Men vs. Uh, it basically uh, has more detailed battles than what's in here. So it has um, Namor versus The Thing, which The Thing wins, which I thought was kind of dumb. Uh, Magneto versus Iron Man, which Iron Man won, which kind of makes sense. Uh, so yeah, it just has more detailed battles than, than on the main book. Which is, again, kind of unnecessary because... Uh, Avengers vs. X-Men is crossing over with other books, so they could detail those battles in those books and not, you know, <laughs> release another uh, six-issue series to tie in with this. But, again, at least the battles are cool, even though I, I don't agree with uh, some of the results. Picked up Batman issue 9, continuing the Night of the Owls crossover. Uh, what can I say? Batman is still awesome. 
and uh, yeah, everything's hitting the fan because the uh, the talents are overrunning Gotham, and uh, anyone related with the Bat Family is is a target as well as their own political target. So, so yeah, this 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 book is amazing. Can't really like what they're doing with Batman. Also, uh, really dig what they're doing uh, with Batman and Robin. And this one, Robin is after going going up against a talent that's after this like general guy. And uh, yeah, Robin uh, once again, Damien shows that he's a badass, and he takes on this like huge vein tal vein like talent, and uh, finishes him basically, <laughs> chops off his head. And uh, yeah, Damien, a uh, really really badass character. Uh, picked up uh, Fantastic Four 17. I was actually thinking of dropping Fantastic Four, and I still am going to drop it. But uh, I actually forgot that they were going to do this, where they have Johnny Storm uh, go live with Peter Parker. And uh, I read it. It's a funny, funny issue. Uh, I'm still going to drop FF, but I had to pick this one up because I thought it was hilarious. And, and just the end panel... Uh, that finally convinces Johnny Storm to move out of Peter's department. It was really, really funny. So, so yeah. Picked up a Green Lantern issue nine, and this is something I don't get from the Green Lantern because uh, they travel to uh, the planet of the Indigo Tribe, and the origin of the Indigo Tribe is revealed. That Abensor uh, captured a whole bunch of criminals and basically brainwashed them to become his own corpse uh, to defend the universe against the Guardians, but. Um, uh, they destroyed the Yellow Lanterns previously on, on Green Lantern. Uh, in this issue, they pretty much destroy the Indigo Tribe. And, uh, they're basically getting rid of all the, the light spectrum. And I don't like that because I really liked what they did that, that they build up this whole, this whole cosmic, uh, light spectrum thing, uh, with the emotions and everything. And, and they're getting rid of them and I don't, I don't like that. But again, everything's building up this big thing with the Guardian, so I'll still pick up Green Lantern. But I hope they don't get rid of all the all, all the you know all the lanterns because then this book won't <laughs> won't mean anything. Uh, picked up Green Lantern, the New Guardians issue eight. Uh, they're still dealing with the whole Larflees thing. Um, uh, Armadillo, I think his name is, is, realizes that there are no more Yellow Lanterns, but. Uh, um, Someone in Quard uh, gives him his own uh, power battery, so he's like the last Yellow Lantern in the universe. And uh, they're still dealing with the after, uh, they still deal with what uh, happened in Green Lantern, where the Indigo Tribe is, you know, missing. So it's gonna be interesting how they rescue someone from the Indigo Tribe. And by the end of the issue, things are not looking good for the Blue Lanterns. So again, they're like systematically getting rid of getting rid of all the uh, spectrum. So. But again, I, I like this one. Picked up Superman 8. Uh, I wasn't really digging Superman, but uh, Dan Jurgens came in, and he was awesome in the 90s uh, when he was doing Superman. So, so yeah, uh, I, I, I like Superman. And I don't know who this Ghost Rider like do this. Uh, I know, I think he's someone from the Wildstorm universe, but I never followed that universe. But, uh, yeah, he's trying to brainwash Superman. Um, the book has picked up. Uh, so I'll keep buying it. Also, uh, picked up uh, Smallville, the 11th season, issue 1. Basically, what they're doing is that they're doing a Buffy the Vampire Slayer where they're continuing the TV show in comic book form. Uh, this one's... Uh, I didn't much like this one, actually. Um, I'll, I'll still pick up the next issue because I, I am curious to see how they follow up with everything. But uh, it feels a little disconnected from the TV show, which, you know, this is supposed to continue the Smallville TV show, and it kind of feels kind of disconnected. They do follow up on Lex Luthor's amnesia from, you know, the series finale, uh, and uh, he's starting to see the ghost of Tess, and uh, that's interesting. And, you know, Oliver Queen and uh, Chloe Sullivan are still together, and now Lewis is actually living with, with Clark Kent, and they changed the costume uh, somewhat, but... You know, I'll pick up issue two, see if things pick up, because I, I, I read um, a preview that uh, the cyborg, uh, Hank Henshaw, was going to make an appearance, so uh, I, I really like the cyborg Superman. Uh, him and Doomsday are the best thing that came out of the Superman books in the 90s, after the death of Superman. 
So I'll pick up, see what they do with the character, and if it's worth it, I'll, I'll continue buying Small Build Season 11. Also picked up the next wave, of, some of the books of the next wave of the 52 universe. I picked up Earth 2, which is going to set up the Justice Society in this parallel world. Uh, basically, uh, Darkseid invades Earth 2, and uh, Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman sacrifice themselves to stop them. And uh, Supergirl and Batman's daughter go into this vortex, and they disappear. So the world's without any heroes. And, you know, things are building up to bring back the uh, the Justice Society. So, that sounds interesting. I'll pick up issue two. This book was pretty good. But I'll pick up issue two, see if I'm convinced on, on continuing the series. Uh, out of this, uh, they spin out um, World's Finest, which has the Huntress and Power Girl. Again, the Supergirl from Earth 2 and uh, Batman's daughter, Robin, that turns into the Huntress. Uh, they enter the portal in this one, and they appear five years in the past for the new 52 universe so they're trying to make their own lives and you know adapt to this new universe while also trying to find a way back to their own universe uh... the hunter's costume they didn't change anything they already introduced this costume the power girl costume i don't like i really don't like the power girl costume uh... the old costume was pretty awesome and they have elements because they have the white and everything but I don't know, I just don't like this costume that much. Um, but still, it, it was a good read. I'll also pick up issue 2, see if if it gets better or if it gets worse. Uh, so that one's still in the maybe pile. Picked up uh, Bart Simpson's pal Mill's house. Uh, they did this with uh, uh, Ralph Wiggum, where they had this, these mini-stories with the character. And they did the same thing with Mill House. Uh, they have like these mini-stories. Mini and where he fantasizes about uh, being a cooler person than he is. Uh, really, really good little book. Uh, I wasn't able to go to comic book day. I really wanted to go to comic book day, but I had to work uh, that Saturday. Uh, but uh, the comic book, the comic book keeper that I, for the store that I go to is I've been going to that store for years and years. So she was able to hold for me uh, the Bongo Comics free comic book. Even though I would have preferred the DC book or even the Marvel book that they came out with, uh, this is still pretty good. I especially really like the cover. Uh, it has comic book guy and all these different costumes like Leono, uh, Kirk, uh, Hell Racer, Astro Boy, Green Lantern, uh, Bizarro, Doctor Octopus, Darth Maul, Spock, Flash, Ghostbuster, Incredibles, uh, Doctor Sayas, Doctor Who, uh, Doctor Evil. Brutus, I, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who that's supposed to be. Uh, uh, or this guy, I don't know who this guy is. But I, just, I, I thought the cover was pretty cool. So yeah, that was free. Uh, picked up Swamp Thing issue 9. Uh, Swamp Thing uh, versus uh, the Queen of the Rot. Uh, he's trying to save Abigail from, you know, the rot infection. And uh, things don't look good for Swamp Thing because he gets really beat up. But uh, he's able to save uh, Abigail Arcane. And uh, she's actually able to fight off the influence of the rod, but at the same time take control of it. So, uh, yeah, she becomes really badass. But the rod not want to give up, uh, resurre resurrects someone that isn't quite revealed. And uh, really, really liking Swamp Thing. Uh, just an amazing book. Picked up X-Men Legacy 265, uh, continuing the Weapon Omega storyline. Uh, basically, the way that they resolve is that they put him in like this stasis so that he won't blow up. Um, but yeah, uh, the big issue is issue two sixty six, which stars, which has the Avengers versus X Men crossover in it, and it has Rogue versus She Hulk, uh, and then Rogue absorbs part of the energy of She Hulk, so she's like this uh, super powered uh, She Hulk. Um, good issue. Picked up Age of Apocalypse Issue 3, uh, Weapon Omega, which is the Apocalypse-controlled Weapon X, uh, is using Celestial Energy to res resurrect all of the dead uh, Alpha-class mutants. So he resurrects Colossus, Banshee, um, Havoc, I know he resurrects Havoc, and he's trying to resurrect Abyss, uh, but that doesn't quite work out, so uh, they kill a few of the, of the exterminated, uh, but yeah, they're, Really, really good book. Uh, I'm really digging Edge of Apocalypse a lot. 
Picked up Uncanny X-Men issue 11 featuring the big battle between the Colossus Juggernaut and Red Hulk. And the Red Hulk is, is beaten, beat him up pretty badly because Colossus turns into this demon form of the Juggernaut. Uh, but then he sees that he's damaging Utopia or the pillar to Utopia. So he basically powers down and then the Hulk beats him up. Um, but it's very interesting that in the first wave of the Avengers vs. X-Men, the Avengers are actually winning. Uh, I thought the X-Men would, you know, put up a better fight, but no, uh, on most of the battles, the Avengers are winning, so there you go. Picked up uh, Marvel Zombies Destroy. This is a new miniseries with the Marvel Zombies franchise. Uh, I really, really like the Marvel Zombies. Uh, I think it's a great concept from Marvel. Uh, and what happens here is that uh, Howard the Duck uh, finds Dum Dum Dogen, I think that's how you pronounce his name, uh, to form this squad to hunt down these zombies because Howard the Duck, you know, has experience fighting zombies. But they go enter this compound that's filled with Nazi zombies. So yeah, uh, things of course go downhill when one of the uh, one of the guys gets infected. It's actually this guy gets infected, and he turns into a zombie. Uh, so yeah, things don't don't look that good for Howard the Duck and and Dum Dum Dogen. But uh, I'm gonna pick it up because I like I said I really like the Marvel Zombies franchise. So yeah, picked up Artifacts. I think it's at issue 18. Uh, Tom Judge confronts uh, Jackie Estacado on the whole reboot of the universe and his selfish uh, ways because you know. He basically uh, divided the essence of the Angelus so that there's no one Angelus host. Everyone thinks it's the Angelus, thus making them weaker. But uh, Danny Baptist actually confronts one of them with her girlfriend in the other universe. And that kind of like triggers something in the Angelus and then they all pour into uh, into the girlfriend. Uh, so yeah, again... Uh, Baptist doesn't inherit the Angelus to someone else, and that that's never good. So, uh, really, really good artwork, uh, really, really good writing. Uh, just really like artifacts. Uh, picked up Wolverine 305. Wolverine somehow is being mind controlled into killing people by a guy called Doctor Rot, which I don't like because it, it was established long, long ago. Uh, ever since Wolverine was brainwashed by the Hand that Wolverine uh, had set up all these defenses against being mind-controlled, so that what happened with the hand wouldn't happen again. But apparently that somehow got erased when he was possessed by the demons or something. So now this uh, Dr. Rod guy is taking control of Wolverine's mind and uh, using him to murder people, uh, which I don't, I don't like. Uh, I don't like when Wolverine's a slave to someone else. Uh, then picked up issue 306, which the cover is actually pretty awesome. I don't know if you can make it out, but it, it has, like, Wolverine, and his brain is like this, this forest. Uh, I really like this cover, actually. The cover is pretty awesome. Uh, but again, it's continuing the storyline that Wolverine's being brainwashed by this Dr. Rod guy. And again, I, I don't like it when <laughs> Wolverine's mind-controlled. Uh, it's been proven, even before he got, he was, you know, uh, taken over by the hand, that Wolverine had much more uh, willpower to resist mind-control, so... So, yeah, I don't know, but, yeah, well, I don't know. And picked up Wolverine and the X-Men issue 10. Uh, again, uh, dealing with the fallout of the Avengers vs. X-Men, Cyclops visits the school uh, to try to, you know, get Wolverine to change his mind, or at least get some of the students to jump over and help them out. Uh, it, act it actually had a pretty cool scene where uh, Cyclops sees the name of the school, the Jean Grey School for High Learning, and... Uh, Cyclops says, I don't know whether to uh, to thank you or to punch you in the head. Uh, but I thought that was funny. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a good issue dealing with the fallout and everything. Uh, so yeah. So uh, yeah, that was the comic book pickup video. Uh, not as much stuff to uh, talk about. You know, I usually come up with a, a lot bigger stack, but it, it's been kind of a slow week. And I'm trying to not buy as much stuff, but... Uh, like always, I do like to recommend the the standout uh, books, and this is actually becoming a, a a bit of a frequent thing. But I'm gonna go again with Swamp Thing. Uh, I really, really enjoyed Swamp Thing. Uh, what Snyder's doing with with Swamp Thing, I think, is really cool. Uh, so I'll definitely recommend that. And the other one I'm gonna recommend is 
going to be as soon as I get to it. Why is it all the way to the bottom? I'm going to go uh, with the Night of the Owls crossover in general. Um, yeah, because uh, this is going to cross over with a Nightwing, Batgirl, uh, Catwoman, uh, Birds of Prey, uh, Red Hood, and I think Detective is going to have one issue. But uh, just the stakes of everything are really, really big because there's like this whole League of Assassins after the Batman family and uh, nobody's safe. Uh, they infiltrate the Batcave and, uh, you know, give Batman a run for his money. So I'm going to go with the whole Night of the Owls event because I, I really, really like this concept. So, yeah, again, uh, <laughs> that was a pickup video. Uh, like always, guys, thanks so much for watching. And until I see you all again, this is Vargas XX78. Signing off.